Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to solve absolute value equations. We just spent some time in the last chapter talking about uh, the uh, characteristics of absolute value graphs. But in this case, we're just going to deal in absolute value equations. So let's start off first with defining what an absolute value is. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. And distance is never negative. Um, so I'll, I'll give you this example. If I live exactly halfway between Charlottesville and Richmond, I don't say that I go negative 35 miles to Charlottesville and positive 35 miles to Richmond. I just drive 35 miles to each city. So distance is never considered to be negative. I never measure something with a tape measure and say that it's negative 14 inches. It's always a positive number. It's always the distance from zero. So most, not all of these equations that we're going to deal with have two solutions. Notice that I said most. Okay, so it's not going to be all of them. It's going to be most of them. And here's a very simple one right here on the screen. The absolute value of x equals 8. Well, the absolute value of positive 8 is equal to 8. And the absolute value of negative 8 is also equal to 8. So my answer can be 8 or negative 8. All right, so let's take this example um, and solve it. So 3 absolute value of 4x minus 1 minus 5 equals 10. So I want to isolate the absolute value first. And isolate means I want to get it by itself. So I'm really looking to get this thing right here all by itself. So that means i got to get rid of the negative 5 and the 3. So the first thing I want to do is add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to end up with 3 absolute value of 4x minus 1 equals, and I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to get 15. 10 plus 5 is 15. All right, so to isolate this absolute value even more, I want to, in this case, divide by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to end up on the left-hand side with absolute value of 4x minus 1. On the right-hand side, I'll end up with just 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Okay, so everything inside that absolute value has to equal positive or negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. The absolute value of positive 5 is also positive 5. So everything that's inside this absolute value, 4x minus 1, can equal negative 5 or positive 5. So to take care of that, I'm going to make two equations, one positive and one negative. So I'm going to say that 4x minus 1 equals 5 and 4x minus 1 equals negative 5. Because whatever I plug in for x that's going to make either one of those equal to 5 or negative 5, after I take the absolute value of it, it's going to equal 5. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the next step. The next step is solve each equation. So again, I have 4x minus 1 equals 5. 4x minus 1 equals negative 5. So let's go ahead and add. Let me go ahead and fix this real quick. Let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. So I end up with 4x equals 6. Divide by 4, so x equals 6 divided by 4, which I can reduce to 3 halves. All right, so let's go ahead to the other, other equation. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I end up with 4x equals negative 4. This one's going to be pretty easy. Divide by 4, so x equals negative 1. All right, so I think those are both my answers, but before I actually circle them to make my final answer, I'm going to check them. So to check them, I'm going to plug them back into the original equation up here at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and, and talk it through. Let's try negative 1 first. 4 times negative 1, so I'm right here. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Minus 1 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. All right, so I have 5. I have to multiply that by 3. So 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 5 is 10. It works. So this is one of my answers. All right, so now I try 3 halves. 3 halves is really 1 and a half. So 4 times 1 and a half, and again I'm plugging in up here at the top, 4 times 1 and a half is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is positive 5. Times 3 is 15. Minus 5 is 10. 
it works. So my answers are negative 1 and 3 halves. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's solve the absolute value equation. Absolute value of x minus 1 equals 3. First thing I want to do is isolate the absolute value. In this case, it is. There's nothing else on the left-hand side of the equation other than the absolute value. So second step, let's make two equations. First equation, x minus 1 equals positive 3. Second equation, x minus 1 equals negative 3. So remember, we're making two equations, one positive, one negative, because everything inside that absolute value can equal positive 3 or negative 3, because I'm taking the absolute value eventually. So I'm going to solve both. So add 1 to both sides. So x equals 4. Add 1 to both sides on the other equation. x equals negative 2. I can't circle them yet. I want to try them first. Let's plug in 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. So that works. So that means that this is an answer. Try negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Absolute value of that is positive 3. And that works. So those are my two answers. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's solve uh, the equation 7, absolute value of x plus 2 equals 35. All right, first thing I need to do is isolate the absolute value. So I'm going to try and isolate this thing right here. So that means I need to get rid of the 7, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So I end up with absolute value of x plus 2 equals 5. So I've isolated the absolute value. Now I have to make my two equations. I have to make a positive and a negative because everything inside the absolute value can equal positive or negative 5. So x plus 2 equals 5. x plus 2 equals negative 5. Solve both equations, so subtract 2. So x equals 3. Subtract 2. So x equals negative 7. Before I circle them, I need to check them. So let's plug them back into the original equation up here. So uh, let's try 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. 5 times 7, 35. It works. Uh, let's try negative 7. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. 7 times positive 5 is 35. It works. Those are my two answers. Positive 3, negative 7. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's solve 6 absolute value of x minus 1 minus 10 equals 14. First thing I have to do is isolate the absolute value. So I want to get this by itself. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So I end up with 6 absolute value of x minus 1 equals 24. Now I need to divide by 6. So I end up with absolute value of x minus 1 equals 4. Now I'm going to make my two equations. So uh, the stuff inside the absolute value can equal 4 or negative 4. So x minus 1 equals 4. And x minus 1 equals negative 4. One positive, one negative equation. Add 1 to both sides. Let's solve both equations. So x equals 5. x equals negative 3. So now I want to plug them back in, make sure they work. Plug them into the, back into the original equation. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. Sin times 6 is 24. Minus 10 is 14. It works. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. Times 6 is 24. 24 minus 10 is 14. It works. There's my two answers. All right, so I know what you're thinking by now. Do all these absolute value equations always have two answers? And the answer is no. And this is an example of one of those. So I'm going to do it the same way I did the other problems, and then we'll see how it's different at the end. First thing I want to do is isolate the absolute value, so I want to get that by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I end up with absolute value of x plus 9 equals negative 2. All right, so I'm going to make my two equations, one positive, one negative. So x plus 9 equals negative 2, x plus 9 equals positive 2. So solve both equations. Subtract 9 from both sides. So x equals negative 11. Subtract 9 from both sides. x equals negative 7. All right, so now I want to plug those answers back into the original equation. Negative 11 plus 9 is uh, negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. 2 plus 3 is 5, not 1. So 
since this side equals 5 and this side equals 1, then I can't use negative 11 as an answer. So now let's try negative 7. Negative 7 plus 9 is negative 2, or is positive 2. Absolute value of positive 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5 as well, which does not equal 1. So that means this is not an answer. Now, I could have seen this coming at this step right here. Because an absolute value is never going to equal a negative number. It will never do it. So no matter what I plug in for x, anytime I take the absolute value of whatever this thing is going to be over here, it's never going to equal a negative 2. So I knew at that point that once I isolate the absolute value, if that isolated absolute value equals a negative number, I don't even need to do any of this stuff because I know my answers aren't going to work because an absolute value can never equal a negative. So the answer to this is no solution. There's nothing I can plug in for x up here in this original equation which is going to make it equal 1. It just won't work.